today we'll talk about updating and modernizing our clock drivers. Um, my name is Chen Yu. Um, I'm currently a kernel developer for Google, uh, working on the Chrome OS platforms. Um, I started out as a hobbyist, working on Allwinner ARM SOCs back in 2013, and I've spoken a bit about uh, bring up and maintainer experiences uh, at ELC. So, uh, disclaimer, I've worked a lot on the clock, uh, common clock frame frameworks, uh, but I do not consider myself an expert. So, unfortunately, the uh, maintainer for the clock uh, framework uh, had to leave early. Uh, he's not around. So, some background. Um, so, uh, back in the day, uh, every uh, platform would implement their own resource management and everyone would have their own APIs. And so, um, so some of the developers came up with a common API for uh, drivers to use. And this is the uh, clock API. Uh, you use it by including uh, Linux slash clock dot H. Um, and this only specifies an API. So the actual core backing this um, is implemented by each platform uh, under uh, their own machine drivers. And then um, later on, there was this uh, clock dev lookup code, which uh, gave you some sort of um, API to look up clock resources. And then in 2011, there was this uh, beginning of the clock, uh, common clock framework, um, which basically implements uh, basic uh, clock, um, basic clock types, so like dividers, muxes, gates, multipliers. And um, initially, this was done with one clock per device node. So you'd have one node for a mul multiplier, one node for a multiplexer, one node for a divider, one node for a gate. And this unfortunately um, loaded the device trees a lot. And you'd spend a whole lot of uh, CPU time parsing your device trees. And normally, clock, uh, clock hardware would have like uh, multiple uh, clocks uh, fitted into one register. And so you'd also have like node address conflicts within your device tree. And so later on, um, the clock maintainers have asked everyone to uh, move. Uh, they've evolved a common clock framework. Um, notably, they've asked many platforms to slowly move to the common clock framework uh, from their own uh, custom stuff. Um, They've moved everyone from having like one device node per clock to one device node per clock controller IP block. Um, there has been uh, work to separate, separate the uh, consumer side from the provider side. So you'll see struct clock for all consumer APIs. You'll see struct clock hardware for all the provider APIs. And then as more and more platforms move to device tree. Um, the global clock lookup stuff has been uh, less commonly used, and this has more or less been deprecated. Um, so now we have like uh, more efficient clock lookup through device trees. And also recently, well, maybe three or four years ago, there was a new way to describe your clock tree. It used to be all purely based on strings. You match your parents based on strings. And now there's a way to specify your clock parents as local um, clock parents, either through the device tree or through internal pointers. So what's wrong or what can, uh, like what's with the uh, ex existing drivers? So a lot of the times uh, drivers are upstreamed and they are forgotten about. So most of the time, developers will upstream a driver, 
And then when it's working, they'll just move on to the next platform, either the newer, newer stocks or the um, newer, newer architectures or anything. Um, other times, uh, if they're hobbyists or they're um, not full-time or something like that, uh, they might have burnt out, they might have quit their job, and no one has replaced them. So you'll have drivers that aren't really maintained. And then there are uh, situations where there aren't any real-world users of these drivers within the community, within the upstream Linux community, because um, these drivers are actually used downstream with an LTS kernel, or used with Android, used with BSPs, and so even if they do run into problems, they might not really report them to us, and there's like a, maybe a disconnect between the actual users and us as a community. Also, early on, a lot of drivers have assumed that they will always succeed, which kind of makes sense. If your clock driver does not exist, your system will most likely either crash or it won't be functional. Um, it kind of works poorly with deferred probe because they don't clean up resources and the second try you will always have something that will fail. And most clock drivers, if not all, are not written to be modular. At, to be loaded as a module. So trying to unload a clock module, a clock driver module will likely um, cause the system to just blow up. Uh, again, that kind of makes sense because like the clock driver is the most essential part of the system. So uh, unloading the clock driver really doesn't get tested. Um, also, the, as I mentioned, the, uh, there was this uh, move to separate the consumer side from the provider side, but the provider side still has these old uh, struct clock APIs, and um, a lot of the drivers are still stuck with that, and it's been deprecated for like five years. Um, so we have around 1,000 invocations in the kernel tree for the old APIs, and around 600 for the new APIs. So clearly, there's still a lot of stragglers. Um, but documentation and guidance around how to migrate your uh, drivers, why you should migrate your drivers, um, is quite lacking, um, which is unfortunate. Also, um, previously, there was only one way to describe your clock tree. You would specify um, what your parents are, what your clock parents are using uh, uh, clock names. Uh, string-based clock names, and that lookup would basically look up through the whole system. So if you had hundreds of clocks uh, in your system, that would take some time. Um, last year, someone proposed hashing the strings for faster um, matching, uh, which would be nice, but um, at the time, I thought that the, uh, that wasn't the real bottleneck, um, so we'll talk about this later. Um, so in 2019, uh, Stephen Boyd added uh, pointer and device tree based lookup for parents. Um, if you have an internal clock parent, you can describe them directly using pointers to their uh, data structures. If it's external, you can describe them through the device tree. Um, you can list your uh, the input clocks for your uh, certain hardware block using the clocks property, and um, in your driver, you can reference each different entry within that property to describe your parent, your clock parents. And that is a much more efficient way than trying to match against the whole table of uh, clock names within the system. So what should I do or what should we do to uh, improve our clock drivers? Um, so first of all, uh, we can clean up our drivers. Um, as I mentioned, um, a lot of drivers assume that um, they are, they don't have to do cleanup, they always succeed. Um, they are pro probably um, initialized early on instead of using the proper uh, driver model. So 
a few things that we can do is like move the clock drivers to the proper uh, driver model using platform devices, platform drivers, um, add proper error checking and error cleanup in the error path, and also add remove callbacks. They may not be exercised, but it's, uh, it's a good thing to actually write them, and then you can actually check um, if it makes sense. Um, and also, we'd like uh, clock drivers to migrate to the new uh, clock provider APIs, which start with clock underscore hardware underscore register. So there are a lot of instances where you have to migrate. Um, automated tools will help, SED or Confidential, those will help out. And um, by migrating, you are really helping the uh, clock maintainers um, to essentially deprecate the old API and get rid of it. Also, um, you can switch uh, your parent references from strings to internal uh, to local clock references. Again, either using pointers or using uh, device tree lookups. Um, and if you're using device tree lookups, uh, try to use indexes uh, instead of strings because strings also uh, e string matching, even though it's just for the DT device tree entries, that will still be slower than having indexes. And it used to be that indexes weren't stable, um, but now with the uh, newer uh, YAML-based device tree schema, the ordering is fixed. So I don't think there's any issues with uh, using indexes for this purpose. So what have we done for for uh, our work. Um, so I've been working on the MediaTek uh, clock driver for uh, maybe the last six months. Um, we've added uh, removal code and cleanup code, error checking for uh, the whole MediaTek clock driver library. They have one uh, library, essentially a collection of functions that they use throughout their, uh, all their SOC drivers. Um, and we've tried to clean up at least one driver so that it, uh, it, it's now clean and it sets an example for um, the media tech engineers to follow. And so as we clean these up, their newer drivers also are much more cleaner and they have uh, fewer issues. So unfortunately, they still have like 10 to 15 older drivers that we have to clean up. Um, that's going to be a lot of work. We've also migrated their driver to the newer API, um, which involved a massive patch set, uh, rewriting basically all the function calls. Um, I think this was originally like 12 patches with um, bisect uh, bisectability issues between them because we had. Uh, the way we structured, structured it was we had one patch for doing all the automation, automated rewrites, and then that would miss them some things, and then we'd have another patch to basically cover all the missed uh, cases. And that would result, uh, help with the reviews because you had the automated parts and then you had the handwritten parts, but that wasn't uh, really bisectable. So, Afterwards, after everything passed review, then we sort of squashed everything and then sent that to the mailing list. And then, unfortunately, that resulted in a patch that was over the size limit of the clock mailing list. So yeah, splitting the, the patches also helps with like sending patches out and having them actually readable. So, the next part we were doing um, is basically switching to local parent references where possible. Um, I've gotten this to sort of work right now, but it's not really cleaned up. I have like uh, unstaged changes for like 10 plus files right now. Um, and I was expecting like improvement to the probe and boot time, but unfortunately that didn't really realize itself. Um, a bit of analyzing, uh, I found that actually the 
real bottleneck for the clock drivers probing was actually um, checking each clock name to make sure that this clock name, when registered, is unique in the system. Um, so that's done for each clock that you register. And unfortunately, the MediaTek um, systems, they have like 600 to 800 clocks within the system, and that really eats into your CPU time. Um, so basically, that's what we've done so far. Um, in the future, we plan to do a, a bit more. Um, first of all, that uh, duplicate clock check thing We'll try to move to a hash table for, for the whole system. So that should massively improve uh, the lookup time, but it might blow the system a bit more. Also, Stephen mentioned that maybe we could do something like uh, have drivers opt out of this uh, duplicate name check, because the names are really only used if you're using global lookups. Now, if you're not using global lookups, then maybe you could opt out. But it's more of a platform decision. And also, we could tr consider like dropping all the clock names and have something auto-generated. Um, but that doesn't help with the, the, uh, the custom names help with debugging. So when you look at the clock table, you will know like which clock you're actually trying to debug instead of some random um, ID that's generated by the clock core. And um, also, the, all the following um, points are basically wish list uh, items from Stephen. <laughs> so we'd like to improve the uh, documentation around the clock framework. Uh, the clock core currently doesn't have much documentation. It has some kernel doc uh, attached, but there's no overall design uh, documentation that explains like, uh, what you should implement in your driver or how each function, how callbacks are used, how the overall code flow is. So we'd like to improve uh, the kernel docs and maybe write an introdu uh, introductionary document that explains basically everything. Um, also, Stephen asked that people um, add more K-unit test to add coverage. I know Maxim's already doing a lot of this. Um, so if people would uh, add more test cases to cover their use cases, that would be nice. And um, there's also an issue with the get parent uh, callback that um, it currently returns uh, unsigned uh, U8. And um, there's no way to signal errors. And also, there's this um, limit that you can only have 256 parents, which seems like enough, but who knows. Um, <laughs> so yeah, maybe rewrite this to return a pointer directly. That would be nice. That would be a, nice, a massive undertaking for the whole clock tree, yeah. And also, I think this one is the uh, more realistic one and that actually um, helps with things. There currently are like multiple RegMap clock implementations. There's one for Qualcomm. Um, there's one for MediaTek. I'm guessing there are more. And they all, they're, they're basically basic clock types like gates, dividers, multipliers, muxes that are backed by a RegMap. However, um, because of like subtle platform differences, you'll have multiple implementations. So we'd like to look at all these implementations, try to merge them and promote them to the core so not everyone has to like duplicate all the code. And Stephen also mentioned that there's this um, prepare lock issue that is basically one big lock around the clock core. And right now, um, it will block changes to unrelated clocks. Say you're changing the speed of the clock rate of your GPU. That would likely block any other changes to maybe your SD card or your display pipeline. And so 
the idea is to try to make the locks more granular um, to, or to make it just affect the subtree that's uh, currently being modified. And also lock tip, lock depth uh, complains about deadlocks when you're using uh, the prepare lock and then uh, with clocks on some slow buses. Um, there's this issue on if the prepare lock is uh, used first versus like if a reg map is used first. And you can get into situations where one part of the driver grabs the prepare lock and then grabs the lock for the reg map and another, another part of the driver grabs the reg map first and then grabs the prepare lock. Then you have a deadlock. Um, so that's about it for, for today. Any questions? I know it's, this has, is sort of more like a plumber's talk rather than a ELC talk. So. Yeah. Um, so the question was that uh, the response time for clock patches right now is uh, abysmal. Uh, and um, is there any plan to have a like co-maintainership co of the clock tree or something else? Um, I've slightly talked to Stephen about this. Um, personally, I don't think I have the bandwidth to co-maintain everything. Um, and I think uh, what Steven is now doing is mostly uh, having platform maintainers do the review work for the platform drivers. Um, that's... I think Merrick has, uh, has an issue with, he's trying to get something merged into a clock core and is basically being ignored. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so um, unfortunately, uh, there are two clock maintainers on the list. Uh, Mike is basically too busy to do anything. Um, Steven is sort of overworked. So I think we do have to come up with some sort of co-maintainership, either informal or formal, like reviewing each other's patches, some, something like that. Yeah. Any other questions? Um, right now, oh, so the question was, can we get of, get rid of all the clock, uh, the name-based lookups for clocks? Um, I think right now there's the fallback path for uh, clock get to fall back to global names. And there's also a fallback path for uh, the clock par parenting lookups in the clock core. And so to get rid of all the clock names, uh, name lookups, I think we would have to like get everyone to update their clock drivers to at least have local references so you could get of, get rid of all the names in the drivers. Yeah. And then ideally you'd have uh, device tree lookups in all the peripheral drivers that use the clocks. Um, any other questions? So the, the, the statement is that um, dropping all the clock names from the, the driver core would likely cause uh, the newer kernels to not work with the older uh, device trees. Yes, I believe that would be a problem because um, even when I'm rewriting this, uh, the, the, the clock drivers, the MediaTek clock drivers, they, they don't have proper device tree references to each other. So they have three or four clock controllers within their system and between them, they pass like 10 to 15 clocks. And right now they're all based on name lookups. And so if you have 
an older device tree that doesn't describe all the clock relations and you run it on a newer kernel that does not do name look lookups, um, it will basically break because the, the downstream um, clock drivers don't know uh, what their parents are. They can't do reparenting, they can't set the, uh, calculate the rates, that sort. Yeah. So I think we can eventually get there, but it's going to take a lot of time. Also, like on block, chip, uh, block driver, we have this essentially legacy mechanism that we reference some clocks by name only because they may or may not turn up at some point minutes or hours later during boot. So, okay, so, so the. So and, and then that's re uh, re uh, relying on the clock framework to just fix itself when another parent. Right, so the statement was that uh, Rockchip has these uh, clock references that are done by name only uh, because the, the clocks may appear much later um, and we are depending on the clock core to um, essentially know when the newer, uh, the, that parent appears and then tie it into the existing clocks. And yes, that is a problem that we've also seen on MediaTek. Um, Essentially, they rely on a certain um, ordering of their drivers and um, the clocks appearing, the, the, plox, the clocks can appear out of order and you want them to be able to be tied together, essentially. And um, sometimes it, may, it might not work when you are using device tree to uh, describe them because then the device tree uh, forces either a certain order or you get circular dependencies, which right now I don't think the, the clock core can actually uh, resolve properly. Yeah. Any other questions? I think we're running way early. Is it <laughs> any? Oh. Right, oh, so the statement was that, uh, Christoph, is it? Yes, Christoph. Yes, so the uh, statement from Christoph is that he worked on uh, getting, trying to get rid of the Paralog, uh, big, big lock, uh, six or seven years ago, and it was just an RFC series, and surprisingly, surprisingly it hasn't moved forward yet. <laughs> uh, I guess it's a lack of reviewers and contributors, yeah. Um, are there any questions from the virtual attendant, attendees? No? Okay. Any other questions or we can wrap this up Are we? No? Okay, well, thank, thank you for your time. <laughs>